There are many reasons to use music in the classroom. One of the main reasons is that the musical rhythm in songs, just like in nursery rhymes, can make language learning more memorable. And research seems to show that all of us, adults as well as children, remember foreign language words and phrases more effectively if we sing them rather than just say them. I expect almost all of us can remember songs or nursery rhymes we learned when we were children, even when we remember little else from that time. In my case, I learned Greek for a couple of years when I was a child. I remember very little Greek now, but I remember we once sang a song in Greek, and I can still sing some of the song now, 60 years later. Bonding a class together. When you are teaching a class, and you feel that the children are not bonding together very well, one of the best solutions is for the class to sing a song together. Though admittedly, this tends to work better with younger children rather than older children, and with larger classes more than with smaller classes. Songs as part of a class routine. At least until we know a class well and have built trust with the children, it is usually best for our lessons to have a clear framework and have routines that give the children security. And music can be an important part of these class routines. There are many teachers who like to use the same song at the beginning of each lesson so as to clearly mark the beginning of the lesson or who like to use particular songs or instrumental music for other key points in a lesson, such as when signalling a change of activity or the end of the lesson. I understand the reasons for doing this, and I appreciate that it can be effective, especially with very young children. But personally, I prefer to be a bit less predictable and set the tone for a lesson where children are challenged to think more. So rather than having a routine where the same song is sung at a certain point in a lesson, the routine would be that a song may be sung at that point, but the song would vary from lesson to lesson. For example, we might start with the children changing the date and weather on a weather calendar and singing a song. All the children's birthdays and seasonal events can be marked on the calendar. And when it is a child's birthday, the whole class can sing Happy Birthday. And when there is a special event, they can sing or listen to an appropriate song for that event. When there is no birthday and no other special event, the class would sing or listen to a song that integrates with the language targets of a lesson. Or if the language content of the song is completely new, the song might just be in the background when the children enter the classroom. Varying the volume. Music can help a lot with classroom management. There can be music playing when the children enter the classroom so as to settle the children down and encourage a positive atmosphere. Then you can turn the music off, or slowly turn down the volume. The end of the music indicates that the lesson is about to begin. The same kind of technique can be used to time activities during the lesson, or to get the children's attention. The end of a song can indicate the end of an activity, or you can slowly turn down background music so as to get the children's attention. Varying the energy level. If the children seem sleepy or lethargic, they can sing an energetic song or have energetic background music to make the class more alive. On the other hand, if some children are stressed or hyperactive, you can use relaxing music to help calm them down. Background music. Background music can be used during games or other language activities, 
but it is best not to use it during activities that are cognitively demanding. Research seems to indicate that under some conditions background music can improve performance, but in other situations it makes it worse. It can often lift the children's mood and involvement in the lesson, but it can distract from tasks where the children are being challenged to learn. In my case, almost all the activities in my lessons are cognitively demanding, so I don't use background music very often. The main exceptions are when I want to make an activity more exciting, especially a physically active activity, or when I deliberately want to make the learning more challenging. I also sometimes use background music for advanced listening, or to expose the children to a song they are going to sing later in the lesson, or in a future lesson. Advanced listening Advanced listening is a personal approach that I have used for years and found to be very effective. I give the parents recordings of songs or fun dialogues and ask them to play them in the background while the children are doing something else or riding in a car. I also use the songs from these recordings for background listening in class. The recordings are of songs and dialogues that aim both at language targets that the children have already encountered in class or that will be introduced during the school year. So even at the very beginning of the year, they are listening to language targets from later in the year. This means that when I introduce a language target in class, they have already been exposed to it. This has a very positive effect on the children's sense for the new language and ability to use it more naturally. There is a big difference between the children who have been exposed to new language targets through advanced listening and those who have not. A traditional view of songs. In the traditional classroom, songs tend to be used for light relief or as a reward for studying hard or for special occasions. When an exam is approaching, or the unit of a textbook has to be finished, it is songs and games that are dropped. The teacher probably assumes that there isn't time to have fun. There is an underlying assumption that studying without having fun makes more efficient use of time than learning and having fun at the same time. My personal opinion is the exact opposite of this. If we are short of time, I think it is the less engaging, serious stuff that needs to be dropped. We don't have time to be serious. Integrating songs If songs are treated as a reward for studying hard, or being well behaved, or just to refresh the children's feeling in a lesson, the songs tend to be used for learning and practicing isolated bits of knowledge and are rarely fully integrated into the learning of language targets that are at the cutting edge of the children's knowledge. In this kind of approach, the same song may even be sung many times, long after the children needed to learn or practice the language content of the song. A good example of this is when the children sing a song like the ABC song, even when they have already mastered ABC. This even applies in less traditional classes, where a teacher uses songs in a teacher-centered way, such as when singing to entertain the children, without pausing to interact with the children, and without integrating the songs with the cutting-edge language targets of a lesson. The negative effect on learning. If a teacher uses serious activities for introducing and practicing new language targets, and then the children sing fun songs for a change of feeling, this can easily have a negative effect on the children's attitude to learning. The children will often contrast the fun songs with the serious activities, prefer the songs, and so become less interested in learning. 
The result may even be that we need to use more and more fun songs or games as bribes or rewards. And the learning becomes less and less important when contrasted with the fun activities. I can kind of understand why songs might be used primarily for entertainment, or why the same songs might be used many times when we are teaching very young children. But with most primary school English as a foreign language learners, I think this approach is both wasting time and likely to have a negative effect. If we want the children to reach their full potential in the time available, they need to be challenged to learn, and the songs need to be integrated with the main language targets of a lesson or program. Choosing songs So which songs is it best to use in a lesson? I think there are four main questions we need to ask when deciding on a song to sing in class. 1. Will the children like the song? The more the children enjoy the song, the more they are likely to learn. 2. Is the song at the right level? Unless we are trying to build the confidence of the children, songs shouldn't be too easy, and they certainly shouldn't be too difficult. 3. Can the song be integrated with the language targets of the lesson or course? Songs are not just an extra activity in a lesson. Singing songs can be a great way to learn and practice language targets. 4. Can the content of the song easily be changed? The best songs are for learning English not just practicing it in exactly the same way over and over again. In order for songs to be used for learning, we need to be able to vary the words of a song. Modifying songs There are many wonderful children's songs, and it is natural for us to want to use these songs in our lessons. However, before we do, we need to step back and look at the songs to see if the language content is appropriate for our class, and we may need to rewrite the songs to make them more suitable. When we use popular English songs, the temptation is to use them in their original form, but this may often do more harm than good. If the song contains too much language that is beyond the children's understanding, the children may just parrot the language without understanding it, or feel that English is too difficult for them, which may weaken their confidence in their ability to learn. As an example, let's look at a well-known song. This song is good for learning and practicing feelings. Happy can be changed to other feelings, such as angry or sad, which is great. But if the children are learning feelings for the first time, there are other parts of the song that are too difficult. If the children are learning words like happy or sad, Conditional tenses will be much too difficult for them. So, if you're happy is not appropriate. This needs to be changed to a sentence that is more appropriate for the children's level. Another problem with the song is, and you know it. This expression is much too difficult for a child who is learning basic feelings. And it is also pretty useless. When can we use it in real life? We can't walk into a post office and say, I'd like some stamps, and you know it. It definitely needs to be changed. Here's a version of the song that I came up with over 30 years ago, though it still seems to work. Are you happy, happy, happy? Clap your hands. 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 Are you happy
writing songs. And you can write your own songs. This is much easier than it seems. I think the easiest way to do it is to use a traditional tune and write new words. I have often done workshops where I've encouraged teachers to write songs for children, and teachers who have no confidence in being able to write songs at the beginning of the workshop end up writing some great songs. If you plan to record songs written in this way, you need to be sure that the tunes are in the public domain. That is why it is best to use traditional tunes. Many of the most popular songs for children use traditional tunes. The ABC song uses Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. The tune for Head and Shoulders, Knees and Toes is from the traditional There's a Tavern in the Town. If you haven't written songs before, it may help you if I recall my first experience doing it many years ago. I had no confidence at all in being able to write songs, but a publisher told me that I needed to add some songs to a book I had written for primary school children. The first song needed to be for the basic sounds of the five vowels. I couldn't think how to go about it, so I adopted a very logical approach. I drew up a list of many traditional tunes and went through them systematically, ruling out any that wouldn't work with five distinct sounds. Just for your interest, this was that first song. I hope you found this video helpful. In the next video, I will look at how to integrate songs into a lesson and use them for active learning. <laughs>